Rankings. Hello and welcome back to the TPO Rankings uh, show and podcast. With me this evening, as always, is my brother Jake. Jake, how are you this evening? Hey, I am doing very well tonight. Thank you. How yeah, are you? Looking, yeah, I'm doing really well. Um, also, what's what's on your mind tonight, Jake? Oh, just having a good week, Cody. Had the yeah. little <laughs> had the Monday public holiday, and it's always nice. Thing. Seems to be a short week and ends in my birthday at the end of the week. So it's just a it good does, one. and then and then another back to back public holidays. Yeah, I don't think happy that, days. I'm, I'm not sure that uh, is Labor Day Australia wide for those listening not no, in Queensland. I don't think do you? So. Yeah, so they get we it get another the time. Yeah, we get the two long weekends in a row. I'm not sure that everybody does, mm. but anyway. We'll take it, that's for sure. Yeah. That's not what we are here to talk about though, Jake. Um, as the, I just noticed, there. so there's an A-League game on right now and um, Brisbane Raw are leading Central Coast Mariners 2-0 and Central Coast just got a red card. So that doesn't look like that's going to do them any favours We are getting back into that game. Um, but that's probably all the A-League will touch on. We might touch on that. Um, some of those clubs in the top 25 updates at the end yep. of the show. But otherwise, let's get into the MPLs. So we were a bunch of the leagues didn't have games over the Anzac uh, weekend, but we will get into that. Uh, let's start in Victoria where there was a full round played. Uh, Green Gully and Melbourne Knights kicked things off Friday night, uh, two all. Uh, there was another couple of Friday night games. Dandenong City drew one all with South Melbourne and Oakley Cannon beat uh, Eastern Lions 4-1. And then the remainder of the the, the round were, was played on Saturday. Avondale beat Dandenong Thunder 2-1. I think they, Jake, I, I feel like Avondale scored right at the end to win that one. I think it was one yeah, all I think for, you're right. Yep. for most of that game. So that sucks for, for Thunder. Uh, Hume City belted uh, St. Albans Saints 6-0. Bentley Greens get an away win. 2-0 over Altona Magic and Heidelberg go to third on the ladder. I think they were, were third anyway, third or fourth. Uh, they beat Port Melbourne Sharks 3-1. Uh, so South Melbourne still sit top of the table. Jake, we're nine games in. It's start, the table's sort of starting to take some shape. Yeah, I was just going to actually make that comment. If you look at it, it's probably got the teams that you'd expect in roughly at least at the top of the table where you would expect them to be for the most part. Um, I don't know whether I would have predicted South Melbourne to be on top at this point, but uh, you know, Avondale, Heidelberg, Oakley Cannons all to be expected uh, near the top of the table. Yeah, and Bentley Green still hanging in there as well. Still pretty close at the top. Um, you know, five points separating seven teams. So a couple of wins um, in a row can sh- certainly shoot you up up the table. So let's go. Oh, no, hang on. Do you have any games for the weekend from Victoria? Yeah, um, I'm weekend. looking at the South Melbourne um, game on Saturday against Hume City. So 1v6, uh, six, Hume City in sixth. Um, but, yeah, just kind of keeping an eye on, on South Melbourne and whether they can hold that top spot. And Hume, I guess chasing the pack down you know if you look at the points separation now like i said nine games in south melbourne avondale and heidelberg have kind of all uh you know 19 18 and 18 points at the top and then there's you know the next one two three four five um clubs probably with you would say even six clubs are all only within you know one one or two games worth of points you know three or four points so and hume city is one of those so these are the sort of games where south melbourne can start extending you know the gap mm. between those chase the chasing pack and if you actually, I just noticed this, Jake, Hume are the team that have scored the most goals uh, so far and South Melbourne are the team that have conceded the uh, least amount of goals. So we'll see which one will uh, be stronger on the day. So does that mean it's going to be a high or a low scoring game, Cody? I don't know, which Jake. wins out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> see? Yeah, we wish we shall see. So let's go to New South Wales MPL. Sutherland uh, Sharks beat Manly United away from home. I didn't, I did not see that one coming. They um, Manly have been doing really well this year, and Sutherland not so well. So a bit of an upset there. Yep. Apia beat uh, Wollongong Wolves two one in the battle of the. I guess I don't want to say has beens, but um, <laughs> no. we'll just leave it there. Somebody for now. will call you out on that one. Yeah, uh, Apia Jake. I saw on social media sign Corey Gamero. Remember that name? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they've got him coming to the club. Uh, Mount Druid Town Rangers beat Marconi 2-0. Blacktown beat Sydney FC Youth Team 3-0. Rockdale City United nil all um, in what was, I'm sure everybody's seen all the all the disgusting sort of highlights there from the so-called supporters, um, which have left their clubs to 
be supporterless or the stadiums will be without fans, um, Jake, you said indefinitely, I think. Yeah, I don't think I saw a timeline on it. It's mm. um, both for both of those clubs, their home games will have no fans at all. Uh, and I'm pretty sure for every one of their away games, they're not allowed away fans. So it'll be only the the home mm. fans, I guess, that are allowed there. So, yeah, obviously the uh, the actions of a few have had impact on many. Mm. Not good to see at all. Um, and I, I dare say there may be some ramifications maybe uh, going forward as well. I don't know if points will be deducted if anyone's made calls on that or um, – I don't know, it's just a bad look in those clubs. I think both have got aspirations for probably a second division at some point. So um, you just put your earpiece out, Jake. Ear, yep. Earpiece out, couldn't you hear me? Temporarily. Mm. Yeah, you didn't I want to you. hear what I had to say. Anyway. No, the, I figured you were rambling. But Yeah. The last game of the round was <laughs> Sydney Olympic and they beat uh, Northbridge Bulls 2-1. So... Rockdale, um, not a great weekend, but they still sit top of the table on 18 points. Blacktown uh, on 16 after their win and Sydney United equal third, I suppose, or third, and then Manly equal on points to Sydney United in fourth. Jake, did you pick a game from New South Wales? I did, um, but Mount Druitt, Cody, you didn't mention as well, also equal with Sydney United and Manly on on 15 yes, points. So there's yes, three they teams are. there. Um, but before I go on as well, Cody, I thought, um, be worth mentioning Sydney FC youth team. What's happened there? Because mm. I don't know if you remember back in the first couple of games, they they had some good results in. I think it was. I mean, they've they beat North wins, Bridge I, Bulls. I think like five four or something or four three. Yeah, in, okay. in one of their yeah, early games. that's right. Yep, that was one of them. And I think they um, had a good result. Yeah, I think they might have maybe won two their opening two or three games. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, but obviously they've struggled since then, um, and probably that ladder is starting to take shape take shape like most people would have thought. Um, maybe with Wollongong and RP or side, like you mentioned. Uh, anyway, uh, this weekend, I'm looking at Sydney United versus Manly United. So third and fourth on the ladder, equal on points. Um, same number of wins, draws, losses so far. Uh, even um, down to Cody, almost the exact same um, scoring ratios. Uh, both have conceded 10 goals and Sydney United have scored 13, Manly 12. So very close. And in terms of the rankings, Sydney United in 26th um, and Manly in 40th. Sydney United, like we mentioned last week, fell out of the top 25. So a win here would probably be enough to push them back in, uh, whereas a draw or a, a loss will actually see them start falling further away. For sure, Jake. I'm keeping my eye on that one. And also Mount Druitt Town Rangers at home uh, to Rockdale. Mount Druitt yep. Town, sort of one of those teams that um, – Maybe people from outside city, including us, probably they're not a big big name um, around the MPL um, circles, I suppose, and probably not a club that you'd see you'd expect to make finals. Um, at least, yeah, not knowing, watching every week and knowing the players and, and coaching setup. But yeah, they're doing well, and um, I've yeah forty fifth ranked forty fifth and playing um, Rockdale, who are ranked nineteenth. They obviously don't go in as favourites, but I wouldn't be surprised if they got something out of that game. Um, let's go to Queensland. So no games were played over the Anzac weekend. There was a bunch of FFA Cup. Um, Fixtures, but we, we won't touch on that at the moment. It was, you... There was the one catch up game, Cody, oh, okay. midweek. Um, remember, it was um, Capalaba and Brisbane Strikers. Oh, so yeah. That was yep, the yep. I think that was on the Wednesday night, which is why we, we probably I think didn't why catch we were, in, in this were recording. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Capalaba ended up winning that one 1 0 with a long range goal. I think I um, sent you the link to that one, Cody, but it was a uh, Quickly taken free kick, I think it was, um, from near the halfway line. So that's uh, got Brisbane Strikers six losses from their first six games. Not looking good. Not looking good. Um, Jake, I'm pretty sure I know which game you're going to pick and you might even be going to this one on Saturday, Lions v Olympic. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to at least consider it. Lions Olympic, um, they're only fifth and sixth on the table right now, but these two kind of heavy hitters from the last few seasons at least and both in the top 25 clubs in the country um, and in, according to the rankings, it's going to be a pretty close game as well. So 55% lines, 45 to Olympics. So for me, this one was an obvious pick of the week. Yep. Uh, to South Australia, again, no games played there. They've only played the two rounds so far. Uh, so looking ahead to the weekend, Jake, picked any from here? 
Yeah, I did. Um, I've picked Cumberland United. I know it's only two games in, but they currently sit top of the table um, with two other sides, I guess. So there's three teams still two wins from two. Um, and they will be playing at Adelaide Comets, who are in fourth at the moment, but they're one of the, the highest-ranked clubs yep. in the country and, and in South Australia. I think they're second, second highest. Yep. Um, so they're ranking behind Campbelltown, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So they're 22nd in the country. Cumberland down in 64th. So they, you know, the um, Comets will be the favourites here. But yeah, um, they're one of the the newer clubs. What probably Cumberland being one of those sides again, we probably don't know a lot about. Um, Comets have been at the top or near the top for a, a few seasons now. So be an interesting game. Similar story in West Australia. There are no games played, and they've just played the. Oh, sorry. No, I'm looking at the wrong thing here. That's not true. Jake, your uh, PDF has stuffed me up here. I've, yeah, I'm no, have to that, open up the, that, the wrong one. Let, let me take it for you, Cody, because I yeah, did stuff up it. the image for you. So Western Australia, Cody, though, remember Perth had that little COVID lockdown. So they actually course, only had the yeah. one game that was played on the Thursday. Florida mm. Athena beat, so top of the table, Florida beat bottom of the table, Coburn City 2-0 uh, before lockdown happened and all the rest of the games were postponed. So no real changes on the ladder um, other than that Florida Athena six wins from six and currently or sneaking up the rankings there into 31st. Um, in terms of games this weekend, Cody, I didn't actually have anything that jumped out as me as a game of the week. Um, Florida Athena are playing oh, their away to Gwalop Croatia, who are currently in fifth. So that's probably mm. um, the one to look at from my point of view. Uh, ECU Jundalop also have Perth Glory Youth Team, which would be a potentially interesting one, although Perth Glory's um, form there is kind of up and down and they're sitting towards the bottom half of the, the ladder at the moment. Yeah, for sure. And Jake, just to, on that floor, it'd be Gwellop. Gwellop, uh, soft spot in my heart, maybe not yours, I'm not sure, but they were one of the first clubs to sort of send us a bunch of gear, jersey. They sent us, yep. I think they sent us full kit. Socks know, as um, well. Socks did, and shorts. Think, yeah. so, um, they'll always have a soft spot in my and, heart. And that, Cody, was when uh, they were in the first division. Yeah. Not even in the MPL at that point and, and followed us along. Well, so I believe they, they, they earned promotion, but they weren't given promotion due to... They, they won. They they yeah. they finished um, by winning the promo or being in the promotion spot, but they didn't meet some of the criteria, so they missed yep. out. But then the year after, they they ended up um, ticking the boxes. Oh, they got there in the end. Let's go to Tasmania, where a uh, full round was played over the weekend. Launceston City beat Riverside Olympic three two. Devonport drew two all with Olympia Warriors. Kingborough Lions go top of the table after they beat Clarence Zebras two one. And the game, I believe we um, previewed Glenorchy Knights, one all with South Hobart. So as I mentioned, Correct. Kingborough Lions, top of the table, and that game there, Glenorchy and, and South are uh, equal, sec- or second and third equal um, on points. They sit on 10 points. Uh, Kingborough Lions on 12, but uh, Kingborough have played an extra game to, to both of those. Jake, do they not have a round this weekend? No, I think um, I'm not sure whether it's just a weekend off or there might be some FFA Cup games in there, but uh, yep. yeah, uh, no MPL games. Cool. And Tasmania, do they just get the one club uh, that qualify for the uh, uh, FFA yep. Cup 32? Yeah, just the one. Yeah, cool. Now, I think I think they give that cup a name, don't they? They've got like a cup and Oh, yeah, you test me. And... I, it's, I could, even if I had it in front of me, I'd struggle to pronounce it, but yeah, um, so enough. I'm not going to try. No problem. Uh, okay, just a couple of leagues to go here. Northern New South Wales, we had some games. Edgeworth get their season bit back on track now after a few uh, losses there. They beat Charlestown, Azuri 2-0. How's this for a bit of an upset? Western Workers beat what was top of the table undefeated Maitland 1-0. And also, I believe uh, Maitland were second, yeah, are second um, top ranked in, in Northern New South Wales. So yeah, big big upset there. The game that I was keeping an eye on, Newcastle Olympic, they they beat Lake Macquarie City three two, Lambton Jaffers three 0 winners over Adams Town Rosebud and Broadmeadow Magic, do it easy over bottom of the table Valentine FC four 0 winners. So Broadmeadow Broadmeadow sort of just we haven't really touched on them too much, Jake. They're just um, quietly going about their business. And they sit uh, top of the table ahead of Lambton and Maitland. And Jake, there's only one game this this coming round. Yeah, I think this is a catch-up game. Um, and 
I wouldn't be surprised if they, if I haven't seen it, but they've decided to put any of the other catch up games. Um, although I think, no, actually, now I look at it, they already played the other catch up. So this is the only one to get um, the two teams that have only played four each um, okay. back up to the rest of them. So, yeah. uh, and that one is heavily favored towards Charlestown, Missouri, according to the mm. rankings anyway, even though they're both at the bottom of the table. Yep. And Jake, the top four in Northern New South Wales. How, do, you, do you see it being the top three there? So Broadmeadow, Lambton and Maitland. Who do you think will get that full spot? Do you think Edgeworth will get back up or will it be one of the other clubs? Oh, I'd have to say Edgeworth at this point. They've just been too strong for too long. And I know they lost a number of players, but uh, I think they're, you know, they've, they've got the, the history and they've got the people around the club from what I've seen on their social media. And, um, you know, they've, I've got one of their jerseys as well because they've been in touch with us in, in previous seasons. So I, um, again, I've got a bit of a soft spot there, but I think they'll, they'll be strong enough. They'll be one of the four. I never, I never received one of those jerseys. I don't have a soft spot for them. They can, no, they, they can uh, miss fine. Yeah. You, well, you're a, you're a like Macquarie fan, I, I guess at this point, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Um, they've had a very tough start to the season, um, probably playing all the, the five top teams uh, from that region in their opening five games. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, they're not doing too well, but that's all right. Let's go to the last league um, down in Canberra. So, uh, West Canberra Wanderers, a bit of an upset here, Jake, ranked 195th, at least they are now. Um, they were 200 and something before this round. They beat uh, the top-ranked side in, in the state, Canberra Croatia 1 0. So massive upset there. Bell Connon United beat Monaro Panthers 2 1. Canberra Olympic drawing 2 all with Gung- Gungalin United and Kuma FC 3 all with Tuggeranong United. So Canberra Olympic sit top of the table after three games. And any games sort of pique your interest there, Jake, coming up? Um, I like the look of the West Canberra Wanderers and Canberra Olympic game, actually, um, out of the four of those anyway, because. West Canberra is the lowest ranked out of all the ACT and or at least in the MPL, the MPL sides um, and Canberra Olympic are currently top of the table, but West Canberra are in third at the moment. So two wins from mm. their opening three games. So that'd be the one that I'd pick. And West Canberra um, are actually new to the the rankings, Cody, this year. Yep. So uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, they started quite low, um, but Oh, and that's kind of based on the fact that they're a new club um, and coming in at the bottom. But maybe, um, yeah, their ranking is, you know, at least from a form point of view and, and a strength point of view, they probably should be a lot higher. And that's what we might see this season. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's, so that's all the MPLs. Jake, let's go to the top 25. Talk us through any updates. Yeah, there's actually not a huge amount of movement this week. Um, there's probably a couple of things to note. And that is, and, and I think I said this a couple of weeks ago, Sydney FC, uh, at risk of losing the top spot, which is, again, they've been there for three or four years now. Um, and they're only about 22 points um, ahead of Melbourne City. And and that could all, it, it's not a huge number, but all it takes is probably for Sydney to lose a game and for, mm-hmm. for Melbourne City to win a particular game one of these weekends. And uh, that could easily switch around. Um the other one is that Bentley Greens has come back into the top 25 um, with their win on the weekend. Wollongong uh, Wolves have fallen out, which, again, one of those sides that's been in there yeah. for quite a while. So we've now had um, – well, it happened last year in 2020, but Arpia fell out. Uh, we've now, in the last couple of weeks, had Sydney United and Wollongong fall out. Hmm. Um, so that makes four Victorian sides and four Queensland sides in the top 25, uh, and only the two from New South Wales at the moment, Cody, Rockdale and Blacktown, who are the top two – on the ladder as well. And Floriot still continued with that win uh, to get a little bit closer. They're 31st. So I know I'm I'm backing them to make it, Jake. I'm backing them to make the top Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it as well. I mean, they're looking at the gap between them and Bentley Greens, who are currently in 25th. Uh, it's about a 30, 33 or 34 point gap. Um, so that'll probably take, I would have thought, at least two or three more weekends worth of wins. Yeah. Um, uh, or an FFA Cup run that, um, get some big scoring games. Sure. Jake, talking of the FFA Cup, um, there were a bunch of games played over the weekend. There's some going on now. Did you want to mention any at all? Um, I don't 
I haven't looked close enough at the upcoming games. Um, yep. There probably haven't been since we had a couple of those big names in in Victoria and um, New South Wales get knocked out. We haven't really seen any. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I can't think of any big names that that have since been knocked out. Um, mm. I think the where Queensland's at is that they're going to have their next round of or the next draw, which is going to be round six, which is two wins away, I think, from the FA Cup for some of the regional clubs um, and probably three games away for for some of the other big names in Brisbane at least. Um, and I think the New South Wales one was drawn recently as well. Correct mm. me if I'm wrong, Cody. So I it's all kind of taking tonight, shape. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. So, so I think most states are at the point where they're only, say, three games away from the round of 32. Yeah, okay. No problems. And as we always do, Jake, under 23 draft, I just clicked on it before while you were talking and I really am looking forward to this week's update. Um, We're definitely not going to skip over it. So for those uninitiated, we picked 10 under 23 um, players from the A-League and they get a score each week um, from the Sports Deck Fantasy A-League website based on, you know, your typical fantasy um, sports scoring things, <laughs> points system. <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we've been adding up every week. We're 18 rounds in with, obviously, tonight, the caveat is there is a game going on right now. Brisbane Raw still leading Central Coast Mariners 2-0 after 83 minutes. And, yeah, we've been adding up. Jake, we've been very, very close all year, but I'm, I tell you what, I'm starting to build a bit of a gap. I'm just about ready to call it, Cody. It's getting a bit out of hand, isn't it? Um, mm. Yeah, so this round, there's a few high-scoring players, actually. Falami. Um, yeah, I think most of them are few. So Falami for, for Melbourne Victory, he got the two goals, didn't he? I think it was um, in their 5-4 yeah. win. Yep. Um, and Brimmer, for me, missed a penalty in that game, which is uh, not great. And it's unfortunate. I think, yeah, I'm just kind of looking at the top scorer. So, Falami was the high scorer. Metcalf for you, Connor Metcalf. Yeah, he's um, been great. Did fairly well. Uh, and then so did uh, Lewis Diarigo for Adelaide. And and Josh, Josh Nisbet has done reasonably well as well for you, Cody. And he's one of those players. Actually, he's the only player who's still um, at or has potential to get points in the, the game yep. that's currently live. For me, it was Joel King for Sydney who got the uh, clean sheet in their 1-0 win. Um which was, I think, last night or the night before. Against so, Melbourne, yeah, last uh, night. Yeah, sorry, yeah. And actually, no, that's not true. I also had uh, Trent Bahaja who, after a long time of not really getting any mm. sort of points, scored a goal, which was good to see. Um, so in terms of the total score for the week, you ended up on 76, uh, and less than half of that, I got 33. So mm. that's two weeks in a row where you've created a gap. I think you've got about a 100-point gap on me now. Not quite. Not but, quite, yeah. yeah. Very close. I'm not um, unhappy about that, Jake. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's all going downhill. I, I was doing well. Uh, There's still, still time. Still plenty of time to go, Jake. And I don't know how many of these players will be vo- involved um, come Tokyo, the Olympics. So we might see some of these players, including um, I know Connor Metcalf is a shoe in for the uh, Oliver squad. Uh, I reckon most of these players will be at least considered. Um, probably a good half of yep. uh, you know, probably our top goal scorers, top point scorers will all be off um, at the Olympics. So um, maybe that'll do me a favour, you know, just call it early. <laughs> well, that might be my only chance. Mm. The, uh, the, the players in form that you've got might be out. Well, yeah, the, the, you never know. The the players who have been on the bench um, like and not been playing, some of those lower scoring players that we have, there's a bunch of them. Um, like you've got, uh, is it Josh? Oh, no, he's mine. Is he Josh Rollins? Who picked him? You picked no, him. No, he's mine. I've got Josh Rollins from Perth. Um, hasn't yeah. really hasn't really played. Had a lot of, I mean, I was going to say had a lot of promise. He still has a lot of promise. Um, sure. But I, I was hoping to see him sneak into that starting lineup. Mm. Um, Daniel Steins for you, again, at Perth. Mm. Um, Perth has had a few, you know, they've got a lot of those young guys who in the first few games got some game time and they've kind of yep. been, you know, pushed back out of the um, the squad, I guess. Yeah, well, they haven't really been performing too well. So who knows? They might um, start changing up their squad a bit as well. Let's get those young players some some minutes on the board, some runs on the board. But otherwise, yep. Jake, that's um, that's pretty much the show for this week. Anything else from you? No, no, that's all. Looking forward to, um, like I said, the long weekend, but also some football in Queensland. And your birthday, Jake. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. For Friday. I'll celebrate that by going to the football, I think. There you go. <laughs> You're committed, aren't you? You love it. 
I do. I've got three noisy kids and a puppy dog, so it's nice to get away and watch some football and have a bit of quiet. <laughs> That's what it's all about, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Jake, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Katie. And we'll catch you all back here next week.